Hello and welcome to Becky's Bible Thoughts. We are digging into the life of the prophet Elisha at the moment and exploring some of the, the incredible little snippets we get about this character's life, some of the miracles that he worked through the power of God and what we can learn from those moments that we can apply to our own lives today. Now see, Elisha had been an assistant for the last seven to eight years or so underneath the prophet Elijah. We don't hear of Elisha working any kind of miracles or giving any kind of prophecies in that time. It seems like he was very much the servant of Elijah, known as the guy who poured water over Elijah's hands. He looked after his master, but of course, within that time, he was also learning from him. And Elisha has seen the power of God at work. We hear of, of stories such as the king sending men to arrest Elijah and, and fire falling from heaven and, and burning up the people who would threaten him and all sorts of incredible crazy stories. Elisha had seen God at work in the life of his master, but then all of a sudden, Elijah's time is up. And Elisha seems to have a little bit of an inkling about it in advance when prophets from Bethel and Jericho tell him that his master is about to be taken from him. Elisha's only response is, yeah, I know, just be quiet. And finally, we reach this point where 50 men from the company of prophets look on as Elijah and Elisha continue their journey and face down the River Jordan when another incredible miracle takes place. We read that Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up and struck the water with it. And the water divided to the right and to the left and the two of them crossed over on dry ground. That is incredible. They didn't cross over on muddy ground, on puddle strewn ground, waiting to absorb all of that lingering water. They walked through on completely dry ground. And we don't read of any delay in between that separation of the water and them walking through it. It's as if, in an instant, that ground has been dried up in some miraculous kind of a way. It is so easy, I think, to skim this part of the Bible and miss the significance of that. See, this wasn't the parting of the Red Sea for millions of Israelites to escape from Pharaoh's army. This wasn't the parting of, of that very same river, the Jordan, to allow the entire Israelite community to enter into their promised land. This was parting the water for two guys to cross over. Not for any particularly heroic moment or any desperate need. Their lives weren't in danger. They weren't fleeing from anything. There was no great necessity. It was just to get to the next place where they were going, to the place where Elijah would be taken away. And it's at that moment that Elijah asks what he can do for his, his mentee, Elisha. And Elisha famously replies, let me inherit a double portion of your spirit. Well, that's only gonna happen if you see me being taken away from you, says Elijah. And as they walk along together, ch chatting, a chariot and horses of fire separate the two of them and take Elijah to heaven in a whirlwind and Elisha is left all alone. I just take a moment to imagine how you would feel in that moment, your mentor, your friend, your master, the one who you've been learning from is suddenly gone completely gone and you are now on your own. 
you saw him being taken and that means that there's this promise of a, a double portion of that spirit that may now be resting on you but but surely surely there'd be a little bit of doubt there right i mean when we read through the bible elisha seems like a character who is perfectly confident and assured but he was still a man and i'm sure in that moment he'd be asking himself like did that really happen? Did I just see that? Do I feel any different? Do I look any different? Is there anything special about me now? What happens if I go back to that group of 50 prophets who are waiting just over there, the other side of the river, and nothing happens? What if I can't do anything? But amazingly, this is what we read happens next. Elisha then picked up Elijah's cloak that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. He took the cloak that had fallen from Elijah and struck the water with it. Where now is the Lord, the God of Elijah, he asked. When he struck the water, it divided to the right and to the left and he crossed over. This is the first, the very first miracle of Elisha and it is incredible, partly because of the absolutely physics defying moment that it was, just as it was for Elijah, partly because it shows us that yes, God will move any kind of mountain for a community of people, but he will also do it for an individual. But also, because this moment in Elisha's story shows us so beautifully God's goodness to Elisha in this very moment. See, there was precedent for this miracle. God had done it before with the Red Sea, with the same River Jordan. He had done it just a little bit earlier that day with Elijah. Elisha's first miracle wasn't something unseen or unimagined, something never before practiced. It was something that, that he could believe in. It was something that he could maybe more tangibly accept as possible. And I just love the gentle way that God leads us sometimes. He knows when we have doubts. He knows when we have fears. And so often as we look back on our lives with that wonderful gift of hindsight, we can see how gently he was leading us to where we are now, just one step at a time, not overwhelming us. Yes, sometimes putting us in situations that feel way beyond us, but doing it in such a way that, that we can develop and grow and learn more of him so that in the next situation we face, we feel confident and able to trust in his power. See, in any other moment, when Elisha needed to count on the power of God, he would be able to look back on his life and remember this incredible moment. Remember that time when God parted the water for him. But I love too that Elisha followed the example of somebody who came before him. When he was presented with a river to cross, he didn't say, you know, hmm, well, I... I kind of need to find a new way of doing this, right? Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask God to miraculously make me a bridge maybe, or a raft or some other means so that I can get across this expanse of water. That's not what he said. See, he had spent years learning from Elijah, learning more of the power of God, learning more of the nature of God. And he said, do you know what? I'm gonna follow the example of that incredible man of faith who I learned from. And that's what he did. And it is okay for us to do the same. It's okay for us to learn from the people who have gone before us, to stand on their shoulders, trusting in the God who led them faithfully too. But of course, 
there always comes a moment where we do have to stand on our own. And as we'll discover in the next few weeks, Elisha went on to do incredible miracles, some of which Elijah did nothing like. And we, we come to that point of reaching out on our own, of using our own gifts, of stepping into our own calling. But it is fine to stand on the shoulders of the people who came before us to get to that point. See, there's this moment in this story where Elisha has that kind of encounter with God. You'll see he asks, where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? Just as he's about to, to hit the surface of the water and how wonderful it is that God answers in such an amazing way showing his power so personally to this individual person and maybe you heard about God from your parents maybe from a friend maybe from the pastor of a church maybe from YouTube I don't know it's so great to have the opportunity to learn from other people in so many and varied ways to discover what they know but at some point at some point in your life you need to have your own personal revelation of who God is so Elisha never asks this question again from this moment on, we hear of him praying to God, of hearing from the Lord, of speaking God's word boldly. In this moment, right here, right at the start of his ministry, right at the start of his calling, he recognized that the Lord was not only the God of Elijah, but the God of Elisha too, just as he is the God of Becky, just as he is your God the God who loves you, the God who gave everything for you, whose power and might lives within you right now and in each and every single day, just as powerfully as he was with Elisha in that moment of parting the River Jordan. That is incredible. That is an encouraging thought for us today. What an amazing reminder this little story, this little snippet of Elisha's life is. Whatever we're facing in our lives today, we can remember from this story that God is absolutely with us, that he is leading us gently to where we need to be, that it is okay to learn from and walk with other people, but that ultimately God's awesome, incredible, miracle-working power is with us and in us right at this moment in time. I hope that was an encouragement to you. We'll be digging more into the life of Elisha on Wednesday next week with this, the next video. So I will see you then.